14th century art in Europe. That's what we're studying. And I want to stress both the art and the history are fascinating and they are totally inseparable. You have to really think about them together, which actually makes it very exciting. And it means I'm going to stress the history a lot along with the art. And you see that in the way the textbook authors have chosen to open this chapter because they start right away with information about history. In 1338, the nine, a council of merchants and bankers that govern Siena as an oligarchy, commissioned frescoes from the renowned Sienese painter Ambrogio Lorenzetti for three walls in the chamber of the Palazzo Publico, where they met to conduct city business. And so here they put you right away in this room, this chamber where the paintings are placed to inspire, to remind the city council members of Siena what they're doing and why they're doing it. So these paintings are meant to, to really inspire good government in a city that is run by a council. It's like the city hall of Pleasant Hill or Oakland or San Francisco, much more than it's like the palace of Louis IX or like the monastery of Cluny. It's a public civic institution. So the video is really important for helping you understand this institution, how it runs the city of Siena and what life was like in Siena. It will also take you in closer to these marvelous murals that are so revelatory. And they're really hard to see in the textbook because they're enormous. Look at the size of those doors. Look at the size of this chamber. So these doors are about 15 feet high. These walls, somewhere probably 35 feet high. This is a big room. And so it's very hard to photograph them, but the video does a beautiful job of looking in closely and panning across the panoramic view. It will show you how the mural represents the city itself, Siena, its common good as a figure, a personification or an allegorical figure, along with allegorical figures, personifications of the qualities that the government needs to have to make this city run well. Prudence, fortitude, peace. And if you look below peace, you can see there are portraits of the nine members of the city council, all men, no women included in this. And certainly, as you've learned from the textbook, these men are wealthy bankers and merchants. In the painting by Lorenzetti, you see a guy herding sheep. He's not, he doesn't get a chance to be in the city council. This is not equality. It's not classlessness, but it is different than the system that we've been looking at in the medieval world so far. And this movie will also help you see more closely the warning that was put into the mural of what will destroy the common good of the city, which is tyranny, shown here as a kind of devil figure with horns, his foot on a goat, with all sorts of destructive, maladaptive qualities, vainglory, greed, Unfortunately, this mural is quite damaged. A great deal of the paint is chipped off, so it's hard to see these sections. But here's Justice. She's been bound in a kind of a straitjacket. She's been kidnapped and held captive. So as you read and as you watch the video, look carefully to see how art is responding to the life of the city and to different kinds of people than you've seen before and it's responding to the government in a public voice rather than in an aristocratic perspective. So here in section 18.1, where the authors discuss the cultural and historical backgrounds for the transformation of European art, they're posing this question and answering it by talking first about literature, literary luminaries, Dante, Petrarch, Boccaccio, Chaucer, and Christine de Pizan. And then they're comparing them to some of these painters that we are going to study. Giotto, 
so important. Duccio, also very important. Jean Poussel. They're making a parallel. What is the parallel? Well, they're using Petrarch to really establish that, pet that parallel. Petrarch, a towering figure in this change, was writing his love lyrics in Italian, the language of everyday life, rather than Latin, the language of ceremony and high art. This might seem unremarkable to us. You know, a poet in Italy writing his love lyrics in Italy, what's the big deal? Except this is the first time that's happening because Latin was the language of learning. It was the language of the Catholic Church. It was the language, as they say, of ceremony. It was the language of the universities that had been established in the 1200s, including in Pisa. It was the language of high culture. And that is a classed term. And here is Petrarch using the everyday language of ordinary people. So I want you to be aware that the vernacular is the language used by those writers, Chaucer as well, instead of the language of the aristocrats. And there's also a new attention to the lives of ordinary people. So the word vernacular can mean the language or dialect spoken by ordinary people in a particular country or region. And it also refers to architecture that is domestic and functional. Our ordinary architecture, the apartments we live in, our houses, instead of grand civic architecture, instead of great cathedrals. And Lorenzetti's painting shows you vernacular architecture as the site of everyday experience, everyday interactions. So these arched doorways are the open air markets where people are buying and selling, bringing the sheep, uh, purchasing items. You see here up on the rooftops of the buildings where people live, the construction going on. So in the film, you'll see the public spaces of the cities of Florence, Siena, and Venice, these republics. And you'll see that the, it's relatively plain. They have fortified buildings. They're using plain brick. Um, it is not highly ornamented. It is not glamorous and astonishing the way you saw the Saint-Chapelle. This, this photograph of the Saint-Chapelle, this is the farthest you can get from vernacular architecture. This is not everyday experience. And so, I'm wanting you to contrast the two because the idea is that the values of a society are expressed in and communicated through and perpetuated by its art forms. So be aware of that as you look at the video and it will take you into more deeply into these vernacular spaces and the character of life in the republics of Italy in the, four, in the 14th century.